A smarter mealtime is one in which children are more likely to choose healthier foods and eat them too. We know that children's attitudes and preferences towards food and eating habits develop at a young age and that good eating habits do not just happen, they are learned. Studies consistently conclude how parents and other caregivers influence children's food preferences. This video resource shows how caregivers in Kansas incorporate mindful nutrition messages for children throughout the day, provides ideas on how to nudge children to make healthy choices, and offers ideas on how to replicate these practices in other child care settings. I have a lot of methods that I use when I, when I want to introduce things into the classroom. We have music. We have, um, I bring actual fruits and vegetables or the product in for the kids to taste, to touch, to smell. I do have what's called a mystery bag and it's just a bag that I sewed and it's got a drawstring on it and I tie it up and we tell the kids that they can touch it, they can smell it and they can shake it. And that's a good way of introducing those senses in there. And so then they try to guess what it is. And I've got books also, so if we're doing, um, uh, the vegetable group. I'll read the vegetable book to them and then I might put something in the bag that I wouldn't think they normally would try such as a parsnip and so on a plate I already have parsnips peeled and, and ready to go and quartered for them to try. I think the thing that has really helped with our program as far as getting the children to try uh, more nutritious things is that we did put out the garden at the end of the year the children get to make their own salads, they get to uh, harvest it, clean it, uh, make the salad. And I've heard children say, this is so good. And we've had children, I overheard one say, this is healthy for us too. And so it's kind of a way for the children to try things and to enjoy it. The children are involved all the way through. They plant seeds, they water, they check on it, um, they harvest it, they wash the vegetables, they make their salad. Uh, and along with that, we plant tomatoes and peppers that they can take home. And it was really exciting last year because I happened to be looking at one of the social media sites and the mother had posted a picture of her son's garden which he had brought the, the tomatoes, peppers. He had a sunflower seed and some green beans that he had planted at school and taken home and raised in his garden. So I can see it kind of carrying over to the home. Nutrition education lessons is very important as we're trying to introduce new foods. Um, we started, we wanted to do cottage cheese, for an instance. And so we didn't know how to put it on the menu. And it's a great protein, and it's a great meatless meal. Um, so we didn't know how to get the process going. And so when I started the nutrition classes, I used it when we did dairy. I just took little samples in, in small little portion size cups, and let everyone have an opportunity to try it. There was quite a few kids that just devoured it and loved it. And there was quite a few kids that said, we have this at home. So it was good to know that they were eating those things at home also. It's important to encourage tasting of new foods because if you introduce children to the healthier foods while they are young, um, they're more apt to be more healthy as they do grow, grow up. How do I get the kids to try new foods? I use a lot of colorful foods. Um, it, it's kind of like going to a restaurant. It's going to look more appetizing, but it's more colorful. I absolutely love the stickers. We tried those the first day and they were a hit. I had a child that had never touched a green bean in his life, and he actually tried it just to get a sticker. And now every day the kids are wanting to try something new to get a sticker. They, they are very, very effective. We started to do a family style snack service in our classrooms. We're doing it really slow because Teachers are not always willing to try, and I've been in the classroom, I taught for 32 years in the classroom, and when you have a class of 23 year olds, it's very hard to teach them to do that. But once you teach them, it's a gift that you've given them a lifetime. There's independence, there's responsibility, they can make their own choices. If they don't want to take the snack, encouraging them to try to take a bit, 
and then you know they might try it. Sometimes when teachers sit with the kids and you visit with the kids, the more you sit there, um, they will eat the snack. They will try things maybe that they wouldn't try if an adult had served it to them. And so giving them that opportunity to pour and to measure, you've got math, you've got science, you've got social, you've got the teachers talking to them about what they're eating and, and the different, you know, maybe an animal that they acted like. Someone this morning was acting like a monkey when she was eating her banana, but she was eating her banana and she peeled it by herself and that was the first time she'd ever peeled it by herself. So if we hadn't have done snacks like that, they would have never had that opportunity. Our goal is to eventually have morning and afternoon snack and then slowly do the, the lunch time. But right now we'll take one snack a day and that's fine for me. I enjoy giving the nutrition information to all the families. After every class, I send to the families, a, just it's not a pamphlet, but it's just a little sheet. I have an area called the Nutrition Nook with Miss Kathy Box, and I just write up, like this month we're talking about fruits and vegetables. So I talked about fruits and vegetables in it, how many servings they really should have in a day, what an actual serving size for that age child, and then I always put a recipe of some sort. So that recipe automatically goes home to the family. So when they ask their child, did somebody come to visit you today? And they all call me Miss Kathy Box. So when they, when they come in, they have an opportunity that they can um, ask the kids about it. And they already know what they've had. And so they've got it right in front of them. Some positive um, outlooks as far as the home life goes is I know I've had many of the parents that have come and they have said, what are you doing during lunchtime? My child came home and they ate a green bean or they tasted a pea. They've never in their life tasted anything like that. I think part of it is being an example because when the kids are sitting there eating their lunch or something, I share with them, oh, you've got peas and carrots today. That's my favorite vegetable. And some of them will start to try it when they see an adult eat it too. And just, uh, I think too, with our characters with our animated literacy, uh, when I introduce a new letter and one of them has a nutrition activity we do along with it, that it kind of encourages them to try it too. Small steps that providers can take to encourage healthier choices is for one, the more colorful, like I said, the plate is, the more apt they're going to try it. Um, they see their, their peers tasting it, they're more apt to trying it also. Um, another step you can take is decorate your food more. Like we made a taco ring today. If I would have just made plain tacos, the kids wouldn't even have really enjoyed it. But when you make it colorful and you put the lettuce in the middle and you put the tomatoes in the middle, they are more apt to experiencing it and trying it. I think if we keep our children more healthy, like I said, the outcome of life is, is gonna be so much better for them.